First time renter in a renter's market in Toronto. No assets. Temporarily laid off. He's talking about himself. Trying to use my $30,000 line of credit in order to find a good deal on a rental. Let's see what's going on. The real estate agent wants me to pay first, last, and potentially two or more months up front because I cannot get a co-signer and the landlord needs security. This sounds dangerous. But is using line of credit velocity banking for rent smart? No. Even in a renter's market, where usually a one bedroom uh, 18 plus is now $300 less for downtown. No. There are a lot of evictions currently, so landlords have so many vacancies. I'm trying to hold out, hoping rents drop even lower. Not much of a question, just hoping you can comment some advice. Rick wrote extra job, like, yeah, sell something. Like, yo, what? Like, can I move in with family? Is there any family I can move in with? Brother, sister, cousin, aunt, nephew, uncle, what? Like, can I move in with a friend? I'll sleep on somebody's couch before I pay $1,800 from a line of credit and be in debt to live somewhere, say, decent. I'd rather sleep on somebody's couch. I'd rather rent somebody's room for a couple hundred bucks a month if I was struggling that much. And then I would figure out a way to 10x my income in a very short period of time, right? What can I sell? Who can I get around? Um, how do I start networking? Do I need to jump on Clubhouse and ask for support? Do I, need to, do I need to go online like this and grab my phone and bam, start recording? Hey, my name is Denzel Rodriguez. I'm struggling right now financially. I'm trying to build a, a, a financial freedom lifestyle. My, my skills is personal finance, but I've had some tough times in my life. I'm trying to rebuild my life. I'm trying to do things the right way. I've had some, I made some terrible mistakes, but I'm trusting in the Lord to provide resources to me to get me where I need to go so that I can be a blessings to others. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to step out of your comfort zone? See, the, 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 people go into debt doing this, this nonsense. Like, no, you need, to, you need to put yourself out there. You need to be willing to take a different path. You need to be willing to struggle, eat dirt, right? And, and work hard, regardless of any COVID, right? Forget about COVID. You need to go, you need to work, you need to produce. Listen, you could walk down the street and get hit by a bus, okay? Your chances of getting hit by a bus, catching COVID and dying from it are probably the same. Okay, at this point in time, let's be real. Okay, let's get out there. Let's work hard. Okay, people die every single day from all kinds of things. There's tragedy all over the world going on. You, if you got two legs, two feet, mouth, ears, nose, eyes, you can breathe, you can smell without any uh, uh, tools, things to help you do that. You can move around. God gave you two legs, two arms, and you can move around and you can put your your body to work and go go become a mentor under somebody, go get an internship, work for free in exchange for food and resources, a place to stay on somebody's couch before you go into debt and just destroy your whole entire finances. Like, like we gotta, we gotta, let's go. Come on now. Replace your mortgage is very expensive, 3,000 plus just to learn to get a first position HELOC. Ooh. So I've never been a part of the program, but I can tell you that if you were to just join my email newsletter, I have a playlist where I titled it all about the line of credit. And I show you how the who, what, when, where, why, and how to find a home equity line of credit in the first or second position, a PLOC. I don't even charge for that. That's on my channel for free. It's public information, right? That's the whole point. Like when I stepped on the, onto the scene, when I started making these videos, that was my goal. I was like, why are people charging for this information? Like, it, like it's just, it should be good information to know. Learn how to become a, a good, effective borrower. Go from owing debt 
take the E out, put an N, call it, go from owing debt to owning debt. Get it? Would you rather owe debt or would you rather own debt? Me personally, I would rather own debt because people need debt to do things. So if I'm the owner of the debt and I charge an interest rate, that's it's consistent cash flow, consistent cash flow. So get to own debt. Okay, I have paid off 10,000 in debt by leveraging my 401k last year, increased my cash flow, started with Snowball, then Velocity, increased my credit score, able to get a credit card for 0% 14 months uh, and a line of credit with a credit union at 12%. It's a little high for this current environment. I would, I would uh, not wanna stay with that 15K for too long, right? But that's good, 12K line of credit, 12%. Make sure you're running your numbers. Make sure you are offsetting that 12%. You want to make sure, run your numbers against Dead Snowball to make sure you're getting the results that you want. Over time, let's see if we can upgrade that P-Lock to a, uh, a better tool. Let's see if we can upgrade that. Steven says, how do you leverage the 401k? I think you kind of missed that opportunity. Uh, last year, you could do a 401k withdrawal without any penalties, no fees, um, up to like $100,000. And so people were withdrawing cash, not loans. They were withdrawing cash, no fee, no penalty. And you can spread the tax over three years. So you don't get smacked with the tax in that following year. You can spread it out over three years. And if you pay it all back within three years, I think you don't pay anything in taxes, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong about that. Um, CNG, oh, I totally forgot about the all-in-one loan. Yeah, let's put that on there. In terms of another way to do velocity banking, you've got the all-in-one loan. What a phenomenal tool this is, you know. Man, let me tell you. So the all-in-one loan, it charges you interest like a credit card, only on the due date. You make principal-only payments up until the due date. It's a checking account, it's a HELOC, it's a loan, all in one. You can have all your income come in, expenses come out, totally automate the whole entire Velocity Banking concept. No need to buy a software if you get the all in one loan or if you, if, or if you get a home equity line of credit in the first position, I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy a software personally because it's gonna do all the work for you. Just, just follow, right? Why pay more money? That's just my opinion. And this is me telling you, somebody that sells the software, I tell you, I partnered with that company, United Financial Freedom, is the only company I've partnered with so far that sells a software. I'm even telling you, look, if you get an all-in-one loan, there's no reason to purchase that. It might, you could if you want. If you got the money, go ahead, splurge. But me personally, I probably would not do it. Now I'm getting a first position HELOC to knock out the mortgage in 4.3 years. Cool. That's a great way to uh, really accelerate above and beyond uh, debt snowball, right? Is you can constantly upgrade your debt tools, right? So let's say you originally start out with a credit card, Velocity Bank with a credit card, and then you upgrade to a personal unsecured revolving line of credit at say 9.5%, right? You knock out your, your cars, your loans, you get it down to your mortgage. And then you're able to upgrade to a second position HELOC at a, I don't know, a 4.5% rate. So that's a smaller, a smaller rate, right? Better debt tool, more effective, probably more, more credit limit as well. Maybe this started you off with 15K, but now with a HELOC, you were able to get locked in for 35K. So you got more leverage. And then you go from a, a second position HELOC to maybe a first, right? And now you got a $200,000 HELOC at an introductory rate of 2.99% for the first year. And then it'll be, you know, whatever the rate is plus prime. 
So you, you keep doing this, right? And then you couple each upgrade with a 0% credit card each time. My man, you are off to the races. Okay, you are off to the race. You, 0% is 0%. I don't know how you argue with offsetting your borrowing costs. We're borrowing from Peter to pay Paul. I pay nothing to Peter. I pay Paul in full via a chunk. So Paul is done. I recapture that cash flow. I redirect that interest to Peter. And because Peter was charging me a lower rate, plus I couple it with these smaller uh, lower rate products, the same interest rate I was paying at Peter, I brought it to Paul. So I didn't pay anything additional when I borrowed interest. I just simply shifted over here. I debt consolidated and then I added velocity with direction, right? I'm moving in a particular direction with my cash. You so right, you are great, sir. I just got the life insurance license. I'm struggling to get clients. I believe I listened to you, to Grant Cardone and others. I need help, please, yes. So life insurance, I recommend getting training. You can partner up with an agency. If you, uh, um, you go to my website, I think I have it in the description here. Yeah, it says for life insurance agents or aspiring agents looking to practice infinite banking, click on that link. They have an agent training program, IBC Global. It's a great program. Teach you how to design policies, sales, marketing, communication, speaking, powerful stuff. You got to get training. What are the minuses of a whole life insurance? Like the negatives, right? So number one, high cost in the beginning. That's a given. What else? High cost in the beginning. You know, some of your, let's see, your negative. Depending on how it's designed, negative First four to seven years or more. So if you got like a 60-40 split type design, it might take you eh, nine years to break even. Maybe 10, maybe eight. If it's like a 90-10 split, you might break even in year four, as early as year four, um, as late as year seven. So you that so what does that mean negative that means I, I put 10 grand in I won't have 10 grand I'm gonna have less I'm gonna have like eight you know or six or seven depending on how it's designed high cost in the beginning negative the first four to seven years or more at any given point in time you can only borrow 90 percent of the LTV so to speak or you know cash value total cash value 90 percent borrow max so I, I don't know if that's a drawback it's just like that's what it is um, if you're not healthy if you're a smoker if you're overweight got diabetes health's not good it, it's gonna be even more expensive it might not make sense if you're, if you're old, if you're older, if you're a lot older, you know, past, uh, past like, you know, 80, if you're like 75, yeah, 70 is like breaking it, you know, um, might not make sense. It might be too late. Okay. It might, depending on your health, unless you're a 70 year old operating like a freaking 40 year old, maybe, maybe. Right, depends on health, uh, age, and finances. So, that's some of the negatives. You guys can put some more negatives if you know of any. Uh, uh, the financial advisors are against 
uh, the whole life insurance, how can you defend the opinion that whole life insurance is worthwhile than investing uh, in stocks? So, in my opinion, why not have both? The life insurance and the stocks, right? So, I, in my opinion, it's the and asset. It's not or. It's the and. It's like, I invest in dividend paying stocks, me personally. So I'm a licensed insurance agent, right? I have a Robinhood account. I have a Fidelity account. I have a TD Ameritrade. I got the Roth, the HSA, the, the brokerage account. I invest in dividend paying stocks. I invest in index funds. I invest in, in growth stocks. I also have life insurance. So I don't argue where, where a financial advisor says avoid life insurance. That financial advisor is actually doing their clients a disservice. Why? What happens when you become a millionaire, ladies and gentlemen? You're going to run into an issue called estate planning and estate taxes. What happens when you accumulate tens and hundreds of millions of dollars in your lifetime. You are going to need life insurance because the estate tax on X amount of money, you're gonna get smacked. And if you don't have life insurance to offset that cost and provide tax-free income to the next generation to pay for all of the real estate, business taxes and expenses, dude, that's a, you're doing a disservice for the financial advisors that are against insurance as a whole, whether it's whole life, IUL term, they're just against it all, right? I'm like, dude, you're doing your clients a disservice, right? Like, look, uh, I think under this current administration, they're going to reduce the uh, estate planning tax from, uh, it's like at 11 million, it's going to go all the way down to like maybe 5 million, maybe 3.5 million. It's going to drop. You gotta wake up, you gotta wake up. Is it better to buy real estate after paying off debt or to buy whole life insurance and why? Okay, so again, why not have both? Depending on your four major numbers, is there a strategy where I can acquire the tax-free bank system, infinite banking, can I acquire uh, the, the whole life policy and invest in real estate? Can I do both? That's, that's what I like to figure out. Now, in regards of what to do first, I think this depends on your mindset. If you know nothing about real estate, never read a book, haven't hired anybody yet, pay off your debt. Read a book, get some coaching, get some education, figure out what industry in real estate you want to become a, a skilled at or maybe even a master in buy your first property create cash flow and then depending on your age and your health and your financial situation your four major numbers maybe we could establish a policy along with buying that property you know you do both i don't see a problem with that why are we starting with the options that only a small percentage can do Hmm. Let's see. So I think you were addressing maybe the hows on velocity banking. So paying off debt, I would say, is the most common one. But let's make something even more clear. In regards to velocity banking itself, it's not for everyone. So at the end of the day, it's never going to be as popular as, um, say, debt snowball. Because debt snowball is universal. It can work in any country. Velocity banking doesn't work in every country. It does not work in the Bahamas, right? It just doesn't. It, it, it's not going to work in certain countries that are not pro-debt, so to speak. Like, like it's hard to get debt tools to, to leverage. So there's that. Number two, you need to have, I would say, at least 500 bucks cash flow to really do the concept and gain some momentum above and beyond debt snowball. 
you got to have good credit. So it, it, it's a harder qualification, which is why I usually always lead with debt snowball. I say, look, we got to do debt snowball first. Get your money right. Get your, get your finances in order. Let's reduce expenses. Let's increase some cash flow here. Maybe work some more hours. You know, and then we position ourselves for velocity banking.